It is the 6th of February 2016 and world news outlets are reporting on a devastating earthquake in Taiwan. The city of Tainan is the worst hit. Buildings are damaged and emergency responders are searching for the trapped amongst the rubble. However, nearly all the reported deaths associated with the disaster are coming from just one building, a tower block called the Weigan Jinglong, mixed commercial and residential building. Loss of life and building collapses are sadly common with earthquakes. However, as the rubble of the building is sifted through, strange items are found amongst the building's concrete supports. Empty tin oil cans could be seen mixed in with the building's columns, and oddly clean steel supports are found. This is hinting at a cause of collapse beyond that of the earthquake. Today we're looking at the Weigan Jinlong Residential Building Disaster. Welcome to Plainly Difficult, and my name is John. Background This is the Ring of Fire. No, it's not the morning after some spicy food, but an area within the Pacific. It's a tectonic belt full of volcanoes, and is very susceptible to earthquakes. As such, you would expect that any country that is within this area would see more than its fair share of seismic activity. Some of these countries include Japan, the Philippines and Fiji amongst others. But today we'll be focusing on just one country, Taiwan. Needless to say, a country located in an area that is known for earthquakes would encourage building designs to be earthquake resistant. Taiwan's building codes are meant to be pretty strict, thus in theory if a building is built it will be resilient to a bit of shaky ground syndrome. One such building that would be built, well at least apparently to the strict earthquake code, was the Weigan Jinglong apartment block. The story of the building goes all the way back to 1982 with the rezoning of some rice farmland in Tainan for the use of building residential and commercial structures. One such structure had its ground broken in 1989 and it was the main subject of our story. It is a 17 story U-shaped steel and concrete building. Being completed in 1994 the building was intended for residential use with commercial use on the ground floor. However the construction was plagued with issues. You see Weigan construction the company behind the project ran into financial troubles mid-project. Apparently they had tried building multiple buildings at once and it kind of blew up in their face with them running out of money. Due to this, the Weigan building sat partially completed as a steel frame for a number of months. During the completion of the construction project, when Weigan Construction got more money, the company used watered down concrete and reinforced the building with pretty much any junk they could get their hands on. The ground floor of the building was open with only the support beams on show, which were not widened to prevent shear failure issues. This allowed for large shop windows. Most of the building's staircases and elevator lifts were towards the non-road western side. So as I said a few sentences earlier, the building was completed roughly around 1994 and began welcoming residents. It would seem over the years the building would be modified in order for landlords to increase earnings. One such way was removing internal walls to open up space for greater rental opportunities. Just a few years after the building's completion, Taiwan would be hit with an earthquake in 1999. This was the Gigi earthquake in which over 2,400 people lost their lives. Multiple newer buildings collapsed in the quake and Taiwan's construction industry came under scrutiny. Rules for new builds after 1999 were tightened up, but pre-existing buildings were not reviewed, including the Weigan building. The area would get another earthquake in 2010, and again the Weigan building survived. The developers probably thought that their building was fine, regardless of their cost cutting. After all, it had survived two disasters. But this confidence would prove to be not very well founded. Whilst we're on a Taiwan disaster vibe, let me tell you about this story of a typhoon causing havoc in Taiwan and the Philippines, which I found at ground.news slash plainly difficult. But what is ground news, I hear you asking? 
Well, ground news is a tool that can help cut through the confusing world that we live in, where we are subjected to the rapid spread of hard to verify information through social media, echo chambers created by algorithms and filter bubbles, and financially incentivized click generating news sources. It does this by gathering related articles from more than 50,000 news sources around the globe. This allows you to see how the same story is reported at different outlets, and importantly, their political biases. Let's have a look at how it works. Take a look at this article. Typhoon Gamey kills dozens and injures hundreds in Taiwan and Philippines. It's been covered by 128 news sources with 44% leaning to the left, 33% in the centre and 23% leaning to the right. If we scroll down, you can see all the news articles, their factuality rating and their lean on the political spectrum. Take a look at this one from the Korea Times left leaning article. Focusing on one part of the story, ship sinks off Taiwan, nine sailors missing as Typhoon heads towards China. This right-leaning article from Depressa is very similar, albeit not really focusing on the amount of deaths. It works for me as I'm always keeping up to date on world news. It's an important tool for thinking critically and not just following one side of the political spectrum. What I really like is the blind spot feature that allows you to check for stories that you may not always see due to having strong political biases either way. I have the Vantage plan, and if it interests you, and I think you will, go to ground.news slash plainly difficult to give it a try. If you sign up through my link, you'll get 40% off the Vantage plan, which is what I use to get unlimited access to all features. I think Ground News is doing really important work, and I hope you'll check them out. Right, let's get on to the disaster. The disaster. It is the early hours of the 6th of February 2016, and an earthquake is about to strike, and the epicentre is in the Mainong district in Kaohsiung city. At 3.57 in the morning, the ground begins to shake. It is a shallow earthquake at a depth of roughly 14 miles. What this means is that it has hit the softer soil along the Chainang plain. As such, the seismic waves are amplified on the looser ground around Tainan. The quake measured at 6.4 magnitude. Buildings across Tainan shook, one of which was the Weigan building, and it violently started to move. The lower floors, which only had the supports and no structural walls due to more open shopping areas, collapsed in on themselves. The more substantially walled western part of the building stood firm. This caused the building to topple over towards the eastern side, which rang along Yongda Road. The building smashed across the roadway, with the upper floors looking almost intact, reminiscent of the Lotus Riverside collapse in Shanghai in 2009. Over 300 people were inside the tower when it collapsed, trapping many within the rubble. Officially, there were only 260 residents, however some rooms had been sublet out to students. Across Tainan, emergency workers were tied up in rescue efforts. Personnel were dispatched from Taiwan's defence forces to help. Hundreds will be pulled from damaged buildings across the city, which will result in hundreds of families being displaced. By the time rescue works across the city had ended, roughly 60 hours after the quake had struck, around 116 would be dead, all but two of which were inside the Weigan building. Shocking news footage came from the rubble of the building. Now, plenty of other buildings were damaged to a point of requiring demolition, but none so catastrophically. I mean, just look at this picture. There's only one building in complete ruins here. This hints that there was more to the building than just failing during an earthquake. Some more shocking photos were taken of oil cans in the building's walls and very powdery concrete. This all raised concerns about the structure's integrity and quality. This would end up in an investigation into how the Weigan building collapsed. The investigation. Investigators pouring through the rubble found a number of concerns. The most obvious was the oil cans in the wall, but more concerning, the narrower columns than specified in the plans. And oddly, polystyrene had been appeared to be mixed in with the concrete. During the earthquake, the building experienced compression on the eastern side and tension forces on the western side. Eventually, the weaker shop-fronted eastern side couldn't hold the weight of the building and the collapse failure sequence started there. The collapse put an unwanted focus on the quality of construction projects across the country. 
Although on the face of it, building codes are strict, Taiwan's construction industry was rife with corruption and corner cutting. Interestingly, as reported in the paper, the major cause of earthquake disasters, shear buildings, by Xi Shan Hu, a burst water main had occurred some time before the earthquake. This weakened the ground around the front of the building. This could have been the reason why the building failed in 2016 and not 2010 or 1999. It would seem that the building's poor quality was known pre-collapse, as at least one purchaser of an apartment had their loan refused due to unspecified reasons, as reported in the Taipei Times when interviewing one of the survivors. We are simple people. We did not think the initial loan refusal might have been for some other reason. Five people were charged with homicide through criminal negligence. In court, they were found guilty and were each given a sentence of the maximum of five years and a fine of 90,000 Taiwan dollars. The five are Wei Gun Group owner Ling Ming Hu, architects Chang K. Pao and Cheng Ching Q, Wei Gan Design Departments Hung Xin Hang, and structural engineer Cheng Xing Xu as said in the Taipei Times, and I do apologise for my awful pronunciation there. During the court case, the prosecution revealed that the company owner, Lin, had pressured the design department to cut costs as much as possible. And on top of that, the architects had illegally obtained construction certificates without inspecting the work. So, it's now scale time. I've revamped it a little bit and shifted the death tolls as a lot of the disasters were ending up between 3 and 5. So for today's disaster I'm going to rate it a 6. And this is what I've got for my bingo card. So do you agree? Let me know below. This is a Plain Deathful production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike licensed. Plain Deathful videos will be produced by me John in a currently quite warm corner of southern London UK. I have Instagram and a second YouTube channel, so check them out if you want to see other bits and pieces I get up to, and I'd like to have a very warm thank you to my YouTube and Patreon members for your financial support, as well as the rest of you for tuning in every week to watch my videos. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching, and Mr Music, play us out please.